a pharmacist or a pharmacy intern and you're only familiar with maybe the more traditional roles of being a pharmacist as in hospital or retail, then this video was going to be for you. In this video, I'm going to talk about five different unique roles I've held as a pharmacist that were not related to retail pharmacy. My resume shows me practicing at many different pharmacy sectors. Um, and so what I want to do is share with you some of my experiences. So let's jump right in. Number one, as a long-term care pharmacist. So uh, early on, I was at a company and I was the consultant pharmacist for several different nursing homes across the state of South Carolina. As a consultant pharmacist, you go out and you review all the charts for the patients that are in the long-term care facility. And this has to be a monthly review of all their drugs, looking for drug interactions. Um, you're also going through the medication carts, looking for expired drugs. You're going through the medicine cabinets in the stock room or the drug room, making sure that um, the nurses and everybody are storing the drugs properly. And so depending on the size of the facility depends on how long you're going to have to stay there. So I would have a facility like in Rock Hill that had about 280 uh, beds. That would take me about three days to do. That's the allotted time that the company gave us to do. However, if you finished it ahead of time, you didn't, you still got paid for going for the full three days. Uh, if it took you four days, then you're going to have to figure that out. Okay. So they kind of gave you an allotted time of when you actually had to get everything completed. Uh, and then at the end of your visit each month, you closed out with the director of nursing, the DON, or sometimes the administrator, and then you just carry it right on until the next month. And so as I'm doing this video, I'm going to give you three different points. Number one, I want to describe what the job is. Number two, I'm going to tell you what I loved about the job. And number three, I'm going to tell you why I quit. Okay. So in the long-term care facility, what I liked about the job was the schedule. Uh, I like having the autonomy to schedule uh, when I'm going out to the homes. It's like I'm not necessarily a morning person. And so the nursing home, of course, is open 24 seven. So there was sometimes where I actually went to a facility about three, four o'clock in the day, and I may work with the second shift crew to 11 o'clock at night. Uh, so also in this role, you sometimes follow the nurses around doing what we call a med pass. So you want to make sure they're given the drugs that's on that medication administration record within the proper time frames that's outlined in guidance. Okay, so sometimes if you only caught the first shift crew, maybe you missed some people on the second shift crew. And when DHEC and other regulators came in, they very well could be there for your first, second or third shift crew. So because I was more of an evening person, I was able to um, take advantage and, and see some of the evening nurses. And it worked better for me because, again, I didn't like getting up early in the morning. The other thing I liked was the chart reviews. So I got a system in place. And so you have to touch every chart every month, but you may not give the same amount of attention and focus to each chart each month. Uh, and so what happens is it's amazing how the relationship you build with this patient uh, just by looking at their charts and then seeing them in the activity rooms or seeing them in their room, seeing them in the dining hall, those type things. Um, so I like doing the chart reviews. It was just the same process for the most part. It uh, utilized my pharmacy skills and the clinical skills uh, and most of the drugs were always the same uh, every now and then you got something thrown in there that that wasn't but again it's for a long-term care facility so you got to think most of your people are geriatrics um, so some of the drugs and the interactions and things of that nature are going to be the same I also like the team building part with the staff uh, so Every so often you have regulators like DHEC coming in and they're going in to make sure that the facility is up to par and they have to go through these regulations and guidelines. And so as a pharmacist and the consultant pharmacist, I was also responsible for part of that success. So building relationships with the nursing staff. So when I'm doing med pass rounds with them, making them feel comfortable with somebody viewing their process. So that when DHEC did come in, they didn't feel um, like this was anything foreign or new. They just pretended that it was me. And if I was uh, not at another facility and was able to participate during that time, I would actually show up at some of the facilities when they were going through a review. And I would walk along with the nurses and the um, DHEC person just to give that nurse a familiar face and help ease it out. So I like the team building part of it. And I also like the fact that you're always trying to pass an audit. Um, as y'all are going to see through this video, I like knowing and working with the regulations, working with the guidance, knowing what needs to be done from an oversight perspective so that when an audit does occur, uh, whoever I'm working with is going to pan out better than they would have if I was not there. So I always like trying to beat um, the audit and the auditors. Now, why I quit? 
Honestly, the reason I quit was because they implemented this rule where pharmacists, the consultant pharmacist was going to have to take call. And what that means is if there was an out of stock medication or a new patient got to the facility and the dispensing pharmacy was closed, the long term care facility would have to call the on call pharmacist. And we would have to go to a backup pharmacist like a CVS or a Walgreens and call them, call in the prescription on behalf of the long term care facility, provide them with the billing information, and then um, they would have it delivered over to the long-term care facility. Well, I did not like being on call. Like I hated it. And uh, the straw that broke the camel's back, I was at church one Sunday and a nurse called me from one of the facilities. And literally, she you're only supposed to call for emergency situations. So uh, at this time we had pagers. So the, the, the pager and the beeper's going off. I walk outside of the church and I pick up and I call her back and she's calling me about triamcinolone cream, which is a steroid cream for like itching. And this is when I just I just lost it. I'm like, this is not an emergency. I am in church um, trying to worship, trying to praise. And you call me about some tack cream is what we called it, TAC. And so I literally put my resignation in the following week. Uh, what is interesting, I did still stay with that company on the dispensing role because I would fill in part time anyways, just at the, the dispensing facility in Lexington. Um, however, they got rid of call a couple of months later, but I had already quit. So that was the long term care. You can be a consultant pharmacist or you can actually work in the dispensary portion of it. Um, and that was kind of full circle because as a high school student, one of my first jobs in Hartsville was working at a nursing home dispensary. So I was already familiar with um, putting things and unit dose packaging because uh, that was my job after high uh, after school when I was in high school and then when I came up to Columbia to go to pharmacy school I worked um, with Eldon Armstrong and he actually was a consultant pharmacist at nursing homes and so I would go with him and I would check all the med rooms for expired drugs and so that was I was already familiar with that line of work um, and even coming full circle, one of the facilities that we used to do together actually then came under the umbrella of the new company that I was working with later on as a pharmacist, and that became my facility. So it's just amazing how things in pharmacy, it's a small world and how it all comes uh, together. So that was long-term care. Uh, that was two roles. One is the consultant pharmacist, one in the dispensing side. Highly recommend it's all closed door pharmacy. Um, so if that's something that you enjoy, I encourage you to check out long-term care. Number two was mail order. So I work mail order at a place in Columbia called National Direct. Um, and a lot of people probably don't remember it, but it was another closed door pharmacy. It was mail order. And um, I worked there part time. I remember getting there and it was like uh, everything was about production. So there was the uh, entry and where you entering in all of the prescriptions. And then there was the station where you're counting. And then there was the station where the pharmacist is checking. And then there was a station where you're not just bagging it up. You got to put it in a box and then you got to put a shipping label on the box. You got to put them in these big bins because the, they're going to all get taken to the post office to be delivered. So when I got there, I was only supposed to as the pharmacist, my job was just to check prescriptions. Well, if you know me well enough, you know I'm not gonna just stand at one station. I like to be able to know all the stations. The only station I didn't really do at National Direct was the data entry. Like I didn't do anything on the data entry side. They had that covered. Um, so I decided I would check prescriptions, but I would also help fill, meaning count. I would also um, help package the boxes and things of that nature. Again, what I liked about this was the fact that I was building a team and I was working with the team and so oftentimes if you're a pharmacist and you go to work you have your assigned spot and usually you're the only one that can do that if you're the only pharmacist there but that does not mean as a pharmacist you can't help out the rest of the team so even when I work retail I would not just stand at my pharmacist counter and check I would also go and I would count I would also go to the register I would go to the drive-through so all of those things in my opinion make you a more well-rounded pharmacist and it also helps protect you that if you go to work one day and somebody's called out you can still keep the flow going because guess what you already know all the stations so back to back to the mail order part the other thing I liked was a challenge. So I remember the first week I got there and we closed at five, I think it was like five o'clock we got off and there were still all these prescriptions to be counted. And I remember looking at the pharmacist and I was like, so what's what we just leave? And he's like, yeah, he said, we never get through all the prescriptions that come in. So we just come in tomorrow and pick up. Um, he said, we have like a seven day turnaround window. So nobody's looking for their medicines right now. So we just fill as much as we can. Once five o'clock hits, we hit the door. 
So I saw this as a challenge. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> we're gonna make sure one of these days while I'm here, we're gonna get through all of these bins and there's not gonna be any prescriptions left. Uh, well, I am happy to say that uh, probably about a month, maybe a month and a half later, there was a day that at the end of the day, all the prescriptions that were in the queue were filled, counted, and boxed. Um, and I, I do take part credit for that because I was literally helping to count. I was helping to pack the boxes, whatever it take at, outside of data entry, I was willing to do in order to make that goal. Okay, uh, so why did I quit? I quit basically because it was the dynamics on the team and it was one particular pharmacist. And so what I will encourage pharmacists, and especially our young pharmacy interns that are, are gonna be pharmacists, uh, sometimes, some people can look at your work ethic and your productivity and your efficiency as a ding on them or that you're trying to show them up or upper management is actually going to praise you more, uh, maybe promote you more, um, and then it's going to call out some of the fallacies in their work ethic. And this one was very interesting because I didn't want this lady's job. I was part time. I had no desire to be full time, but she was still had some intimidation around the fact that I was working as hard as I was. But it, it, I don't make it look hard to me. It was just it was just natural. Um, and so I just got tired of that kind of dynamics um, and I had already conquered what I really went out and set out for, um, which was the challenge I saw there, not being able to get through all the prescriptions. It was great, but I ended up quitting and they did close down. I don't know how long after that, but they're no longer in existence. Okay, so that's mail order. I've never worked in like a PBM mail order facility, so I can't tell you what that looks like. Um, I'm assuming it's very similar, but probably uh, on a scale of like 100 times bigger. All right, then I worked at Caremark. So that's gonna be my third one, uh, non-traditional role. And so Caremark, as you may know, is a pharmacy benefit manager, also known as CVS Health. Uh, they're in the managed care insurance space, so they're, they're a big conglomerate, right? Well, way back in the day when I was working for them, I was what you would now call an academic detailer. And what that means is I didn't have drugs or samples that I was actually going to doctor's offices to, to give or to say that this drug is better than that drug, I was actually pushing and promoting a preferred drug list, okay, known as a formulary, but then it was called a preferred drug list. Um, and it was, I remember one of my drugs was Asifex, and that's a proton pump inhibitor for reflux. And so I would have to go to these physician's offices, they gave you so many that you had to do. So my quota might have been eight a week. You, and, and by quota, that means you gotta go and see and get eight signatures from physicians for the whole week. Okay, again, it did not matter if you got all eight in one day, you just took the rest of the week off, okay? Uh, it, it, that part didn't matter. So you already know one of the things I loved about this position was the schedule and the autonomy of being able to get the work done at my own pace. So um, we would have the particular drugs that was on our list. It was for a local insurance company. And then we would go in and say, hey doc, for these patients of this insurance company, write this drug, right? Um, so some of the things I loved again was the scheduling. I loved the trips. Uh, so you got to take all these nice fancy trips because it was, you were almost like a drug rep, but you weren't pushing drugs, you was pushing a list is how I used to explain it to people back in the day. Um, so I would be sitting in the lobby with uh, drug reps and they may have a competitor drug to me. And I was like, look, I know both of our drugs work, uh, but when I go to the back, I'm pushing my drug for this subset of patients. Not that yours is clinically superior, mine is clinically superior, mine is covered on this particular plan's formulary and yours is not. Um, I like meeting new people and meeting new people in an interdisciplinary team. So I got to interact with the nurses. I got to interact with the physicians. I got to interact with the receptionists known as gatekeepers. That comes in handy when I get to my entrepreneurial part because you got to know how to deal with people of all levels because you're trying to get to the CEO of the company, but you got to get through the administrative assistant first. And so all of this non-traditional roles, all of these paths I had helped to teach me something that was actually going to help me when I got to my entrepreneurial path. So why I quit? Um, this was the most unfulfilling job I have ever had, I think, in my entire life. I think I stayed two and a half, three months, and, and, and I quit. Um, and it was crazy because it was not a lot of hard work, uh, but I, I hated it. And I did hate the travel uh, a lot, too. I 
almost like with the long-term care consultant position, having to travel all over the state, and I don't like driving. Uh, so that was another reason why I quit the job at Caremark. But the main reason was it was the most unfulfilling job ever. Okay, and so then that brings me to job number four, which was my one of my favorites, uh, and that is in managed care. And so I was the director of pharmacy services for a Medicare Part D program at a local blues plan, and I absolutely loved this job. I remember calling my mom the, my first day there, and I had on my high heel shoes, my cute little outfit, I had my uh, little briefcase, and I'm walking across the parking lot, and I'm talking to her, and I said, Mama, I might be here forever. I said, I might have finally found the place and I'm going to retire from. I said, I get to wear my cute clothes. I get to wear my high heel shoes. Um, I said, they even got a Starbucks in here where I can grab Starbucks coffee because you couldn't tell me I wasn't like uh, Victor Newman's daughter and stuff on the soap operas. Like, you know, I just knew that I was working at one of these big old companies and I get to just show off all my corporate stuff and push papers and write notes and all this kind of stuff, right? So I was so excited. And to be honest with you, um, what I loved about it, I'm gonna skip ahead, then I'll come back to what the job was. What I loved about it was absolutely everything, to be honest. Um, I loved the fact that I had to be involved with the guidance. And so part of my job was providing oversight of the Medicare Part D program. So CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, puts out all these rules. And so I was responsible for reading those rules and then making sure that our plan and the vendors that help support our plan were actually in compliance. So I was also responsible for star ratings, making sure that the members were being adherent to certain medications and things of that nature as it related to star ratings. And so I absolutely loved that position, okay? And the position was started because they went through a performance audit and they failed miserably. And CMS auditors said, hey, you all need to hire a pharmacist to be a director over this program because you need better oversight clinically. And so that's how I got the position. So my first task was to clean everything up because they had a validation audit coming. So I had to go and take all the deficiencies that came from the performance audit, get it all cleaned up so that we could pass the validation audit, which we did. Um, other things that I loved about that position was, again, staying ahead in an audit. So because I had all the rules, just like it was when I did the long-term care facility, I knew what the rules, I knew what the auditors was looking for. So now it was my job to make sure that we did that so that when an audit did occur, there was no gaps. Um, I like to tell people, not that I'm perfect in an audit, um, not that the plan will be perfect, but there shouldn't be anything that comes up that I didn't already know about. I don't like surprises. Why I quit? Uh, so you're probably wondering, Renata, if you love that position so much, why did you quit? Well, uh, it, I, I quit because at the time when I got hired, we were with one PBM, one pharmacy benefit manager. Uh, about two years in, the plan was to move to another PBM, which we did. And I liked that PBM a whole lot better because I felt that they were more culturally fit uh, with the blues type organizations, right? And then, after that three year was up, they decided to move to the PBM that we switched from originally. Uh, and because of that move, I put in one of the longest term <laughs> Uh, resignation notices as soon as they decided they would move back I, I decided I would quit so I said you know I'll get everybody through the transition um, which would have gone live January 1st 2020 and then I'll quit so I stayed into January 3rd or January 5th something like that because I had to stay a couple more days over uh, because I was the one of the last set of people to get into the pension and you had to stay exactly five years so um, that's another tip if you if you are going to quit someplace and you're in some one of these pension plans or four one gay plans know the rules and also for the bonus potential so i wanted to make sure i got my bonus for the full year um, and it was also the right thing to do i, I wasn't going to just quit and leave them high and dry knowing um that they had to go through a pbm transition so that's why i left that job the other reason is i knew some of the pitfalls and i also realized that i i felt i couldn't be as strategic because now going back to another PBM, there's a lot of processes and operations things that you gotta get in place before you can actually be strategic again. And so it wasn't the fact that one PBM was better than the other, although I do think one was a better cultural fit. The reason I quit because of that is because now I had to go back and do more operations and more processes versus being more strategic, which is where I was, uh, where I was headed. Uh, so 
I decided to quit. I started uh, a business because I also knew that I could be more nimble and I could close more gaps and do more things if I was outside of the four walls of the corporate uh, of the corporate walls. So I wanted. I know I could get more accomplished as a vendor. So that brings me to non-traditional role number five, which is an entrepreneur. Uh, so two of my entrepreneurial journeys I will talk about. I've literally had eight or nine businesses, ten now, but we won't talk about that one that one's just created just for something else but anyways about 10 businesses but i want to talk about two because um the first one was rmj pharmacy solutions and i'll link a video where you can learn more about how i got started with that business but it was a staffing agency uh for independents across the state and so that was it was retail jobs um, but it was me staffing myself and staffing others into these community pharmacies and i loved it again because of the scheduling um, i loved it because i was feeling a need uh, for somebody the reason i quit i really got bored with it because it was retail it's just me working retail for myself and putting other people out so i did get bored with it and i got tired of all the driving i, I hate driving so i quit and now what I'm doing from an entrepreneurial standpoint is I'm the CEO of Peace and Incorporated. And what we are is a managed care consulting organization. So the, the company that I left um, in managed care, the local blues plan, they're actually one of the, my clients. They came on as my first client. And so we help them improve their star ratings or the quality ratings. Um, we also have other blues plans and non-blues plans on our book of business where we're helping improve their member experience. Because guess what? whenever you're going out to retail pharmacies and the members are coming to pick up their medications, if they're having hurdles like prior authorization required or they can't get their medication for some reason, then when they get this survey about how do you rate your drug plan, how easy is it for you to get your needed prescription drugs, they may rate the drug plan low. So I have a team that calls the pharmacy to get these issues resolved, call the members and explain what's going on. So anything to help out the member experience. Um, what I love about what I do now is, again, the scheduling and the autonomy of my schedule. I'm filling a need. I always, always, always find the most fulfillment whenever there is a problem and then I can have a solution. And I think that was one of the problems like with the job I had at Caremark. There was not really a true problem um, and it wasn't really a true solution. So to me, there was no fulfillment. So in the position that I have now, there's true problems all around and CMS creates them a lot of the time. I'm not going to say problems. I'm going to call them opportunities. Um, and so then I can find these solutions and sometimes I can move, not sometimes, most of the time I can move quicker than most of your other vendors and even the internal organization itself. So that's one of the many reasons that I just love the entrepreneurial journey that I'm on and I love working at Peace In. Also, this is the only time I've actually had full-time employees so even under rmj pharmacy solutions i hired pharmacists but they were 1099 workers they worked whenever i couldn't work pick up a shift here and there uh, this time i've got 16 uh, employees that work directly for me um, and i now have the challenge of somebody depending on me for a paycheck so that's another opportunity to fill a need so that helps me get up in the morning because it's not just me eating and paying bills and surviving. I've got people that are depending on me for that. And when I say depending on me, um, this is another nugget that, that I'll drop. I didn't really intend for that to be in this video, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Um, when you're working these jobs, don't think of the job necessarily as the means to your survival, okay? Um, as a Christian, I think of the job just as a vessel, um, but I don't think of it as the source. I think the Lord uses me as a resource and a source of provisions for my staff, but if it wasn't me, he would provide for them somewhere else. And I think that's how I've been able to switch positions so many times from traditional to non-traditional is because I never looked at the job as my source of income. I always looked at Christ as the source of my provision and whatever job I decided to do, whether it was a traditional or non-traditional, that was just the vessel or the vehicle to provide me the income. But my true source of providing me what I need and some of my wants always came from Christ. So that's just a little nugget there. 
Um, and so I don't have a why I quit with PCN because I am still there um, and, and I enjoy it. We are seven years in. Um, people often ask me, well, Renardo, would you ever sell your company? And the answer is, I don't know why I would sell my company because I am enjoying it. Uh, I, I feel that PCN has literally become the culmination of all the years that I put in in the pharmacy industry. It's taken everything that I've learned, everything that I've worked, all these experiences. I mean, every last one of these career options that I've told you about today, they all play a part in what I'm doing right now at PCN. So hopefully you found this helpful. Um, as I stated earlier, I will link a video for you to go and watch so you can know more about um, what I did and how I got started with RMJ Pharmacy Solutions. And also, if you're interested in being an entrepreneur and finding problems and actually solving those problems and monetizing it as an entrepreneur, I suggest you watch the video that's on the screen um, because it's going to tell you about how I find problems and then how I use those problems to find a solution and monetize and make money.